All right, we made it. I just saw Mission Impossible 6, Mission Impossible Fallout, and uh, I have some thoughts to share with you. So once again, perhaps unsurprisingly, uh, this Mission Impossible movie blew me away. It was just incredible on more than one level. Uh, everyone points to the stunts like they, they always have in these movies, and the stunts are there, but there's meat to it. I mean, the film's two, almost two and a half hours long. It it doesn't skate by on just big moment after big moment. They have those, but in between all the gray area is some really good character stuff. And picking up plot strands from every movie, literally every movie in the franchise has a little moment where I was, I was like, oh, oh, that name, I remember that name, oh, that, I remember that moment. Uh, so I'm, I'm really glad I binged the franchise before this one. Um, even the second one, the one I just don't care for at all, there's a there's a part from the second movie that comes up in this one, or, or like something he did in the second one that happens again in this one, and it's just like, wow, you guys even took from that one. You just, and I, I get a little warm feeling when franchises do that, because nowadays franchises are really quick to to write off the worst received um, movies in their franchise. And that just seems kind of lazy to me. It works sometimes, but I, I appreciate a franchise that still acknowledges that the the rotten eggs exist, even they don't dwell on them or anything. Um, but you know they 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 know they're there. They're like, yeah, here's a little throw a little bone. So I appreciate when franchises keep them in the loop. Most franchises. I wish other. I wish there were some that just wouldn't. Now, I'm not a betting man, but I would put money down on this franchise continuing, considering it's the sixth film, and arguably the best one yet. And that's just kind of unheard of with franchises. Um, so they're probably going to make another one, but I will say if, if they wanted to make this the last one in the Mission Impossible franchise, I think it would be a good conclusion. Uh, not only do you just... Once again, you just keep topping yourselves with the stunts. The action is just so well shot. It looks gorgeous. No shaky cam, no so close up in the lens where you can't see what's going on. It's it's just all around gorgeous, but they pick up like uh like I said, they pick up plot strands from the other movies. They they tie up they tie up in nice little bows these things that were brought up and you thought maybe they forgot about them and we're just kind of sweeping them under the rug. But they bring them back, and not in like a, uh, not in like a sappy way or a way that didn't work with this the plot in this one. It all fit really well, and at the very end, it's just kind of this feeling of euphoria, like it's ah, uh, it's it's all it's all tied up, it's all said and done. I'm sure they're gonna make more, but in my head, if they stopped here, this I would be totally satisfied. Now I can't talk about the action enough. And this one, I think, has the best action of the whole franchise, for me personally. Uh, because in my mind, there's four types of action a movie can have, an action movie can have. You got the hand-to-hand, -hand, the fist-fighting action. You got firefights, you know, shooting, shooting at each other with guns. You got m m motorized vehicle chases, you know, car chase, motorcycle chase. And you got explosions. Now, Mission Impossible has always had the car stuff, the car and motorcycle chases and spades. Almost always great. Um, not really big on explosions, big on stunts, some firefights. The hand-to-hand -hand stuff has been kind of, there hasn't been a whole lot of it. And when there is, it's not bad by any means. It's It's no, like, Taken to where it, it's just the shakiest you can't see who's throwing the punch and who's getting hit type stuff But you know, it's it was kind of middling for me It was paled in comparison to all the stunts and and the car chases and stuff this movie has some kick-ass hand-to-hand combat scenes and that's my favorite type of action of any of them the raid movies the martial arts the the fight the hand-to-hand -hand fighting in that mo those movies just incredible um, 
so in the bathroom scene in this Mission Impossible movie comes around, and it's in the trailers. I'm not. I won't spoil the context of it, but you know it exists. This scene is so awesome. It's the the punches feel so real, and the characters they they get exhausted during the fight. You know they're not like superheroes. They're they're these guys. They're they're secret agents. They're spies, but they're not technically the biggest martial artists out there and they, they fight this guy that's he is one he's a martial artist and he they he, it's just a brutal brutal fight and the camera's away from the from the fight it, you could just take it all in it's it's just glorious so i was really happy to see that and on that same note um one of my favorites my other favorite part of the movie is uh henry cavill's character his addition to the uh, the cast here, and I gotta feel like with this character they were kind of. And I keep talking about Fast and Furious when I talk about Mission Impossible, um, but I just feel like they're two different sides of the same sort of coin. I felt like this movie they were trying to they were throwing a little jab at the Fast and Furious franchise with Henry Cavill's character, because like in the trailer they say, uh, the, the CIA lady says. IMF, you know, the Mission Impossible folks, you guys prefer a scalpel, I prefer a hammer. Implying that IMF, they like to be all cute with their, their masks and you know, sleight of hand and, um, you know, getting into conversations with the enemy and, and talking them into getting what they want. And then there's Henry Cavill's character who just goes in and beats people to a pulp and takes takes what he wants. Um... And the, Tom Cruise, Ethan Hunt, and um, Henry Cavill's character, whose name I, his character's name I can't remember right now, they're kind of like butting heads a little bit in this movie, um, where it's like IMF versus CIA, spy stuff versus brute force, and yeah, I won't spoil anything, but just the way that that relationship, um, the direction it goes, just kind of makes me think like. They're saying our franchise is better than yours, type thing. I'm, I'm probably thinking way too much into it, but I got a little bit of extra enjoyment thinking that that's what they were saying. You know what? It occurred to me when I was thinking about what I would say during this uh, review discussion. I haven't, in any of my reviews of the Mission Impossible movies, even mentioned. I don't think the the theme song. Dun 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 dun. That theme song. Is so fantastic. And there, there aren't many out there that that get your blood pumping, and just. I personally think the Mission Impossible theme song sounds more like a, like a spy movie theme, than the 007 one does. Sorry, uh, it just it just sounds like. I don't know, like you're going undercover and you're you're, foiling a plot. I don't know. I just I just love it, and now it's kind of morphed in these last couple movies into this big action packed like it gets more like uh it sounds a little bit more like Hans Zimmery like the instead of do 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 it's like boom 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 I don't know, I just it just pumps me up every time when the uh the opening credits roll it just it just gets you in the mood and you're you're there you're ready for Mission Impossible and it's one of my favorite parts about the franchise as a whole there are any of them. Even the second one, I liked it. The The theme song always hits home. I love it so much. As far as negatives go, um, I have to think kind of hard about it because it was really just a great movie. Um, I'll say the, the plot is a little dense. Uh, I would say it's the first time since like the first movie where I was really struggling at a couple of moments to kind of understand what was going on. Uh, what their what their plan was, uh, how they dis- how they were gonna get what they wanted, I who had what, who was doing what. I there are a couple moments where I got a little bit confused. And I plan on seeing the movie again this coming weekend, so hopefully that'll iron that out. Um, but first time watching, I struggled with that a little bit, uh, which like I said in my review of the first film might not be a pro- an issue with the movie and more just with my listening abilities and movie watching intelligence but one could consider that uh, a fault at least for me it 
it did, I guess, harm my enjoyment a little bit because I was just like struggling a little bit, but not not a huge deal, not a huge deal at all. Now it's time for my final thoughts on the movie. Um, just wow, what a ride! Uh, it's it's fantastic. Although when I'm trying to rank it in the in my ranking of the movies in the franchise, I still have trouble. I really think the the last three, four, five, six, are so tight together. I as between my filming of this and me seeing the sixth one last night, I've been juggling in my head. I know last review I said that the fourth one was on top, then the fifth one. And now that I've seen this, and now I'm rethinking the whole the whole thing, and I really just to struggle. They're all so good. Um, I really think they found its footing with the fourth one, and it's it's just been springboarding since then. Miraculously, just keeps clearing that bar they keep setting higher. Uh, I don't know the fourth one. I I have a soft spot for the fourth one now, just because. I just like that it threw you right into the plot. Uh, and you just really didn't have time to take a breath the whole movie. Uh, it's a different kind of it's a different kind of thrill. It's a different kind of ride than something like Fallout, which has more meat, more of like a, more character driven. Yeah, it explores relationships with the characters more. And it has some breathing room um, to explore these concepts and and things like that. Whereas the fourth one didn't have much time for that. It was go 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 as from from the get go until the credits roll. Literally, the whole movie. It, I would equate it to like my feelings on the first Avengers movie at the end of Phase One of the MCU, and then um, Infinity War that just came out. I have trouble still when I think about it ranking which one I like more because if the first Avengers was at the top of my list until I saw Infinity War, and now I'm like, I don't know. But they're two different experiences that I just love so much. Avengers was just the thrill of them getting together, uh, and it was just a light, fluffy entertainment, but it was just so exciting seeing seeing the characters on screen doing their thing. Uh, it was a superficial plot, just, to, just something to get the team together and, and have fun. And then Infinity War comes along, and it's this dark story the characters you come and love from the the first avengers they're thrown into some deep dark stuff and i just i loved it for that reason i loved it that it was about the characters and the story they've been going on for 18 films um i loved both of the movies but for different reasons and back to mission impossible i i don't know i feel like ghost protocol and fallout it's a similar relationship. Ghost Protocol was more light, fluffy. Uh, there weren't any, there weren't real stakes between the characters. Um, there was nuclear weapons involved, so there were stakes like those kind of stakes, but um, nothing like nothing really like meaty, chewy that you could really dig your teeth into uh, with the characters, the the close personal relationship stuff. And then Fallout has that. So, uh, I don't know. Maybe seeing Fallout again will paint a clearer picture in my head for whether it goes to number one or it sits below the fourth one somewhere. I don't know. Right now, I'm thinking like a a 95%. So, it's I, I loved it. I love it. I'm drone, droning on because I just... It's a movie I want to talk about. It's, it's I loved it a lot. Um but yeah, 95%, loved it a lot, gonna see it again at least one more time. I'm thinking IMAX, because I'm hearing now that IMAX is just the, the place to see it, and after seeing it in a regular theater, I, I kinda wanna see it in IMAX. Um, so yeah, that concludes the franchise review. Uh, I had a great time. Like I said, one of my favorite things to do is binge franchises. Uh, I gotta think of the next one. I know Creed 2 is coming out later this year. Rocky franchise. Uh, but we'll see. Anyway, uh, thank you for watching. And I'll talk to you next time. See ya.